Hi guys, it's Jan from the Adrian Nerd and I just wanted to have a quick video about AV1 video compression. AV1's a new up and coming video compression algorithm that's hopefully got a lot of impact in the streaming world. It's the ability to encode a video stream to a much dense or optimized format so you can stream higher resolution better increased bitrate and still staying within the bandwidth of say Netflix or Amazon Prime so I've checked FFmpeg will encode to AV1 so let's encode some test footage and we'll see the results. Right, let's launch a command prompt and we'll go through the command. ffmpeg minus i and then the input file name in this command test.mp4. Test.mp4 is just a 5 second H264 encoded video of the shark tunnel used in the basic series. Minus C colon V tells FFmpeg to use the codec for video Libra V1E. This is one of two AV1 codecs in my build of FFmpeg and then the output file name test underscore av1 dot mp4 I've heard that the system overhead in encoding to av1 is quite intensive so I'm going to run the encoding and I'm going to capture the task manager to see how much the system's struggling or coping with while it encodes the five seconds of video right Press return and we'll encode. After a couple of seconds, I don't know if you can tell by the graphics, two and three threads of the ACO processor are bouncing around to near 100%. One of the actual threads is peaking and staying at 100%. So it's actually taxing the processor quite a lot. I'm not sure it must be optimized for multi-threading that's why it's only attacking that one core to 100%. The FFmpeg is actually encoding at only one and a half frames a second. I'll speed this up and come back in at the end. So here we are coming to the end. Total encode time for this 5 second video clip was 2 minutes 26 seconds. I brought up Windows Explorer to see the file size differences. So 4 seconds of video, the top one test.mp4 was the H264 encoded test underscore av1.mp4 is the av1 encoded video if you just look at the file sizes it's drastically reduced from four and a half meg to under one and a half meg for the same video clip i've viewed the video clip in vlc and cannot see any noticeable difference between the two clips at all quality wise this has major impacts in the streaming world. Imagine being able to stream a 4K movie at only half the bandwidth as we're using now. Or if you have very limited internet, say your ISP package is capped to a certain amount every month. This video file compression could save a lot of people money just for the fact that when you're streaming a film, if it's streamed in AV1 
you're possibly only going to need half the data usage so streaming a standard encoded 4k film might take 10 to 15 gigabytes if you're watching the same film and can stream it in 5 to 10 gigabytes the cost saving alone will be brilliant the other aspect of it is for those people that live out in the country who don't have very quick internet when you read all these sign ups for well here in the UK like BT Sport and Netflix Prime there's always the little clause at the bottom saying internet speed of 2.5 megabits is needed for this service if they streamed in AV1 you would literally need to have that value so you would be able to have a streaming service provider at only 1.1 or 1.2 megabits a second opening a lot of possibilities up to those that live further away from the exchanging cabinets I've never in, even thought of the possibility and the cost saving in the long run of the actual streaming service can you imagine if Netflix only needed to pay for half the bandwidth they're using I would hope this saving will be passed on to the customer but yeah you never know right guys in one of the last videos I ripped Battlestar Galactica DVD for season 2 just out of curiosity's sake I'm going to use it for Vempeg and I'm going to encode one of the episodes to AV1 I'll see how long it takes and I'll see if I can get anything to actually play it other than my PC. Right, let's open a command prompt and get going. Well guys, after a little bit of thought, I'm not actually going to run it in the command prompt. I'm going to create a batch file and then run the batch file. Just after some initial maths, it's going to take over 6 hours to complete and as I want an exact timer, if I run it in the batch file I can store the start and finish times of the encoding in a text file called timers and the middle line in the batch file is doing the actual encoding to AV1. I run the batch file late at night and came back in the morning and these are the results I got. I ran the batch file and started the encoding at 27 minutes past 11 and the next morning it had finished encoding at 20 minutes past 6. That's an encoding time of 6 hours 53 minutes. I'll bring up the Windows File Explorer and we can see the size of the files. Right guys, forgive me for looking at my screen rather than the camera but I'm just going to read the figures off. The title underscore t00.mkv is the mpeg2 encoded ripped episode off Battlestar Galactica. The title underscore t00 underscore av1.mkv is the freshly encoded av1 file that took nearly seven hours to do. Uh, the original is one and a half gig, the av1 is 191 meg. I've played them both and compared them in VLC and I cannot see any discernible difference between them. Just for a comparison, I've copied the H.265 encoded file in there as well and that's 336 meg. So AV1 even beats H.265 by over 130 meg. Now you have to make your own mind at this present time but seven hours encoding over 
five or six minutes to H264 to save a hundred and thirty odd meg. Um, I'm not too sure it's worth it yet. Once hardware coders become mainstream, oh, it's definitely going to be worth it. I'm hoping as well that the price of televisions and Blu-ray, 4K, DVD players, anything with a media player in it will also become cheaper. Because it's royalty free, open source, the manufacturers don't need to pay to use it. All your TVs at the minute that will accept a flash drive in and will play an MP4 file MKV file from the flash drive have had to pay royalties to be able to use the different decoders to play that film. With AV1 there will be no charge to use it. There's modern TVs coming out now that have got AV1 decoding built into it. So I think this will be one of the bigger codecs that we will be seeing a lot more in the near future. This is Jan for Aging Nerd. I hope this video has been helpful. Please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thank you.